This conversation is happening at the Indigo Bookstore in North or in, in West Calgary. We, we we haven't had anybody show up for this, which doesn't surprise me. It only <laughs> proves that uh, uh, right now we are living in a world where the internet. They sat us with candles. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really, we are living in a world right now where the internet is enabling us to build these kind of cultures that just don't work in reality. I mean, there's just literally no one in the building here, except for the, the, the seven of us who... No, there's a few back at the coffee shop. There's the barista's no, at no, the coffee there's, shop. There's nobody in the building here who plays, who plays a role-playing game. There's lots of people in the building, but there's nobody here except us that plays a role-playing game. And there's no chance of somebody walking in except for us that plays a role-playing game. And it's, it's not just that you're all friends. It's that people are, people feel like this is an opportunity for my friends to judge me and to decide whether or not I am a worthy person and they don't want to fail. Yeah. yeah. What, what do they say about failing? About failing? Yeah, about failing. I mean, you took failing. psychology. Oh. You took psychology. So what, what can you tell us about okay. failing? I would say that in our school system, we were taught that failing is a bad thing and it's bad for you and it's to be punished. But in real life, if you're looking at business, if you're looking at becoming a leader, anything like that, you have to learn to fail, get over it, and learn from it, and fail forward. So failure is good for you. It's fundamental. You have to fail, that's or you how don't we learn. learn. That's really how humans learn. Well, my first so. games were horrible. I mean, not, my first D and D games were absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. So. I have no idea, though, why I was willing to fail, whereas most of the people around me did not feel comfortable being DM. So what made you want to be a DM? Oh, I wanted to be a DM the very first time I played the game. It's a control <laughs> factor. I want to rule it's and hurt others. It's a total control factor. No, that was, that's my thought, too. I want to rule and hurt others. Uh, self-esteem? Your own self-esteem, own self-confidence? I certainly. Yeah, but were you more confident than the other kids? I, and that's funny, you know, because I would say yes, but I was abused. Mm. You know, I was I was a nerd. I was abused constantly. I was Don't insulted <laughs> constantly. I was I couldn't walk down the hallway without somebody calling me a name. I mean, it was really bad in school, and yet it didn't seem to bother my confidence at all mm -hmm. because I was more than willing to jump in and do this. And it just it was such an opportunity to create something and then to pretend that other people were involved in it. It's exciting. I really don't know why. Yeah, but you see that just that question just now, you said you wanted to right from the start. Your yeah. response is totally different from he's like, well I would I don't want to fall short of everybody's expectations. Well it's, it's not their expectations, it's my expectations. I'm a textbook perfectionist. So I won't do it unless I know like all the gears are working and it's going to go off flawlessly. Which is why I don't do anything of it. It'll never go flawlessly. Ex exactly. It'll never go flawlessly. I'm a perfectionist too. I'm a recovering perfectionist. Yeah. I am the hardest person in my life on me. So when other people come down on me, it's even worse. Because oh, yeah. I'm already beating myself up. So I had to learn how to step away from that. I think it would be easier for me to do something like DM if it ever came up. Well, right you want now, to try I it? Have a, I don't have any ideas of what I would like to DM, so there's no story for me to tell right now. I won't do it because <laughs> I have no time to commit to it. And when I do it, I do it in a very half-assed way because I have no time to commit to it. So then I don't do it. I would, I would not want to do it because, A, I don't have, I feel, the skills to keep everyone's expectations up. I don't have the ability to keep everyone just on their edge of their seat and just so enthralled that, you know, I, I lack those and that's why I wouldn't want to do it. Maybe the reason why I wasn't phased by the possibility of failing when I was in school was because I was always getting abused. Maybe because I had nothing to lose. I had no self-esteem. Well, I had lots of self-esteem, but I had no, I had no esteem to lose among my peers. I mean, my friends, they knew me, they trusted me, but beyond that, it wasn't like I wasn't used to being downtrodden or told I was a failure or insulted, and maybe I was immune to it because of that. Maybe I didn't have any fear because I was immune to abuse from other people. The nothing to lose mentality? I couldn't be judged. It was impossible to judge me. I got judged so often, so continuously from four years of age, 
that by the time I was 15 and ready to play D&D, I was beyond any possibility of anybody effectively judging me. <laughs> and besides that, if you judge me, I'll kill your character. <laughs> well, I never did that, right? I mean, I'm really big on the whole uh, legitimacy thing. I don't think DM should even threaten that. I mean, I, when I started, it was all, you know, do this or I'll hit you with a bolt with lightning or, you know, so on. But now and then I joke about taking away 100 experience, but I never do it. It never happens. He threatens, he starts to mark it down, we all quickly distract him, and then we go on to something else. <laughs> well, I wouldn't really expect a player character to take a thousand experience off their character if I told them to. I think it would be smart enough for them to go, okay, he's going to forget about that, or he has no idea how much experience I have right now anyway. <laughs> exactly. All this stuff so easy to bullshit. I fall under the cheating and desire to win stuff I was talking about before. <laughs> but I don't really have any trouble keeping people in line. No. And that's because I don't ask for that one. But you have come up with a couple of things to, to do, like the candle. Well, they were young. Oh, I love the candle. The candle is like going to school and having the teacher turn the lights on and off until you pay attention. <laughs> it's right on par. When they were 20 years old, we couldn't get... It, and there were six or seven of them in the room, okay, and they're, they're, they're all 20. We couldn't get the game really off the ground because the references or the jokes or the, the media things and so or on. Or the so sugar forth. flowing through your body. And the sugar flowing through everybody's <laughs> body. And the fact that they were young and full of piss and vinegar and so on meant that it was really like herding cats to get them to focus on something just long <laughs> enough for me to actually get a description out of my mouth so that we could get the game. And so I came up with the idea that we would light a candle, or I would, I would let them go nuts, I would let them screw around, and then I would light a candle, and when the candle was on, everybody would shut up for 20 minutes, and then I could run and get all the detailed parts, and then I could blow the candle out, and they could go back to being stupid. We blew out the candle twice so we could tell them to go to hell, and then we lit it again. I remember that. Well, you have to do whatever you have to do. <laughs> We only did it for about six months, but it's true. When we were 20, there were eight of us playing all the same time. We were nuts off it's the wall. A lot to run. I ran 14 once. I have the suspicion that they were either all his age or they were all 20 when he was 40. They were all my age. Uh, and I remember this was boy, Dan, and there was his girlfriend. And she was one of those people that come along for the game because the boy came along for the game. Right? Um, she really wasn't involved in came it. Came for the SO. Huh? She came for the SO. She wasn't really involved in it. And they didn't really like her, and they didn't really like him. And there's 14 of us playing. So during a break one evening, six or seven of them sort of came up to me when I was in the kitchen, and they were like, can we ask Dan to quit the game? We don't want Dan to be here anymore. And I evaluated it in my head, and I thought, well, I don't really like Dan either. So I said, yeah, I'll handle it. And I went out, and I said, Dan, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave the game. And your girlfriend, too. And they swore, and they threw things, and then they left, and we just went back to play. Ta-da! Well, these are the stories. People say online they want to hear more stories about me running, but all the stories about me running are me acting like a total shit, because it's the only <laughs> stuff I remember. <laughs> we want to hear more of you being a total shit. So you've got lots of memories is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I don't remember any stories about they took this castle or they such and such rolled this dice at the last moment. I know that's happened over and over again. But I really don't remember the stories I was busy DMing at the time. And I just... Well, the stories so I remember... Are... You remember the negative stories. <laughs> I remember all the negative stuff. <laughs> when I accidentally killed my maid with a gun because she rolled a roll and she shouldn't have been able to roll. <laughs> well, that's been... A, that's that's rel relatively recent. I'm talking about stuff from the 80s. Okay? From when I was running and I was like 25 and 27 and so on. I don't remember anything really from that time period except the bad stuff. Yeah. Don't do that again. Fist fights, the sex in the bathroom. The fist fights, the sex <laughs> in the bathroom. I remember that stuff. Yeah. Why don't you DM? Why don't you DM? Because I tried once and I absolutely horribly failed. So I tried to compress, um, basically, I tried to compress a 
pre-gen campaign that was designed for multiple weeks, multiple hours over like three months into a five hour running and act and slash a lot of stuff out of it. And in the end, it was no fun for the players or myself and I need to be able to build that confidence back before I try. So I, I tried to run a campaign at a, a, a guys only camping event I do once a year and we were all out playing I'd taken a pre-gen campaign that I'd been run through through a, uh, a group that I was involved with. It was designed to be run over the course of three months, five hours a night, one night a week. And I hacked and slashed it apart and tried to run the entire thing so we could bring beginning to end conclusion in five hours. I was scrambling, I hadn't done enough prep, I wasn't sure what I was cutting out, I cut out incorrect stuff. Everybody fails on their first try. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm aware Everybody. of that. Everybody. I'm aware of that. Even the people who think they haven't failed. <laughs> <laughs> because their friends are all going, no, no, it was excellent, it was excellent, it was it's excellent. Great. Don't don't let Jim know it was bad or he'll stop running D&D. &D. Then we'll have to do it. Before, so Mel's run it and you said it was terrible too. Yeah, well, again, again it, it comes down to the fact that yeah, in that setting, in that event, we've only got about to five hours of play time. Okay, but, you but, can't really run something decent. I think the trick is, did you you struggle the first time, but did you like it enough to want to get better? Because that was my stance. Yes. I didn't like it enough to want to go back and get better. Yeah, yes. It, and and I, I will I will give it another attempt. It's just the timing. How long has it been? Oh. It's been just over a year. Well, that's oh. not too bad. It's only been about a year, and really for me at the moment, it's also finding a group that I'd be able to run. I'm, I'm comfortable playing in your world, I, I enjoy it, but for, for me to sit down and try and form another group, I don't really have as much time as I'd like outside of what I do uh, That's the advantage you have used work. to, is that you do have a, a group yeah. that would be 100%, oh, it yeah. would be well received. Because they're just flexible, uh, flexible time all over the place, mm -hmm. and I have nothing but time, so it really helps. What have they said about have you ever brought up the subject of you running? Oh God, no, no. So you don't even know what they would say? Oh, I'm pretty sure they would say yes. But it's not perfect enough for me. But it will never be perfect. You have more free time Oh yeah, school. I know that. It will never be perfect. So you like the meta game of planning the game without actually playing Exactly, the game. yes, actually. I love that shit. Oh, the meta game is huge. Yeah. Most people out there who are who are even remotely interested in DMing. Most of the people who even remotely think about playing are really only playing the metagame. Yeah. I want to sit down and I want to rebuild the combat system because that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm never going to use this combat system that I'm rebuilding. But I can rebuild it. But I can rebuild it. It's so cool. It'll be perfect. <laughs> Sounds like the bionic man. We can, rebuild him. we can make him better. I feel like you're secretly sewing pigeons and rats together when I'm not. You watching. have no idea what I do in my spare time. I really don't know. If and I it's want better to. that way. <laughs> right now, I'm making a map for my trade system, not because it's part of my world, but because I'm making a map just to demonstrate how my trade system works. And I really got into the quality of the map this afternoon post it tomorrow probably or something and I really like the whole feel of oh look I'm doing this and I'm making this happen and then and then I get to play show and tell tomorrow after I finish the map and show and tell is my favorite <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing this is what I love about blogging and writing is I get to play show and tell every day were you that kid that brought like I the hate, best thing you could find I, in show and tell at school I hated show and tell. It was so boring. But every time I had something, I didn't have to wait. I didn't like the, the whole, you have to stand up at the front of the class thing. The whole, I have this thing and I'm going to meet people before school so that I can talk about them and show them stuff. Absolutely loved that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely thought that was the best. And, and I still do. Every, every time that I have something new to post on the blog, I get so excited. This is so cool. I get to post it. Just absolutely giddy. Ready to have kids. To be fair, he's a man with a whiteboard in his kitchen. <coughs> he is a man who owns a whiteboard. And it's not just that he owns it, it's that he finds special reasons to use it. Because there are many times when he could have written that somewhere else. I've got two terabytes of dash cam footage to go through. 
Unfortunately, ninety-five percent of it is just driving where you've got to turn off the camera. Yeah, <laughs> it's a show and tell as well, right? Because you want to you want to find some really cool stuff on there, something where somebody is just just by an inch missed by a car. Yeah. yeah. So that you can put it all together and put it on the, on YouTube and become hugely. I am just so glad I grew up in a time where the most memorable PSA was that be safe on trains, dumb ways to die thing. Thank you. Oh, Our PSA was play safe with the robot. I'm a robot. You're not. <laughs> do you remember that one? Yes, no? I do. After a green of saw, we just come yeah. down and chop them. See, up Houston like, gets the play <laughs> safe. I'm everybody younger than my modern age Germany. Gets the, everybody my age gets the don't you put it in your mouth. Yeah, Boys and there's food that singing. Too. I got the end of that. <laughs> those, those all remind me of the absolutely deadpan, boring first aid Canadian Forces training videos where you can bad, bad acting because they're soldiers, they're not actors. <laughs> I am acting. I did good. <laughs> yeah, if your comrade has been cut by a knife, this is how we bind the wounds. <laughs> but remember, don't bind them too well because comrade is a captured soldier. <laughs> <laughs> So if I pull it back to D and D after this particular discussion, what do you think about the feeling among a number of people who play D and D that there shouldn't be any squick in it? I don't know what squick is. Like gory, gross, gory stuff? anything, ah. that's, anything that's gory, they anything that's really sexual, played. anything that's immoral, <laughs> anything that's what we've just been talking. About. Well, I'm sure if you play with nuns, you could probably well, get in. I'll go from welcome. a discussion that we had just the other night where we discussed the drinking table in a PG game, if you want to call it that. You would never consider or conceive of anything like that. But let's face it, we're, we're talking a fantasy world based in part on a reality world. Drinking is part of our everyday life. Maybe not directly us, but you know, it does happen around us. And, and to incorporate that and to, and to create rules and, and tables around that is quite intriguing. Um, and, and I find the, the way you did it was quite interesting. It, it made a lot of sense. I got into so much trouble a couple of years ago because I proposed a description for an adventure game which would have been about the equivalent of a PG movie. Mm -hmm. and the only thing that, that, that happened that was questionable during the thing is that the pirate and the man had a discussion and at some point she's leading him on and then she slaps him as a sort of a a 1940s come on and then he pushes her down to the sand and then I got it. You don't know what happens after that. And I got into so much trouble for that. Really? Oh yeah. I've constantly said that sex in D&D doesn't mix. Many people just feel there shouldn't be any sex and in D&D ever. Well you know I listen to a lot of podcast D&D games uh, which I quite enjoy yeah. and the ones I find that actually they're run by gay men mostly seem to have no problem with having the sex in there and it doesn't seem weird. They don't let it get weird. They don't let the it feel weird. Mm -hmm. And for oh, them I it's just... You could do anything. No yeah. one would think anything of it. Yeah. But for them it's just people comment, oh it's so great to have such an inclusive story where you have a world where people could be homosexual. And he's like people are anything. They're straight, homosexual, bi, I don't care. And they're a big it's man how the, the players team. play it and I go along with it. He's like, I can't make it weird. Although I have drawn the line of doing an outright sex case scene because do you really want to do this with me <laughs> right now? Yeah, no, I, don't, so. <laughs> I don't do that either because I assume that whoever I'm talking to is probably pretty uncomfortable. Even when I was when I was completely crazy <laughs> and young, it's pretty easy to see the expression on a boy's face when you're when you're both seventeen and you know, you're playing the girl as the DM and the nerd is is sitting in his chair and you want to make it real, but at some point you have you have to pull back. Hold yeah. up, this is getting weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, um, and yet I, and yet I, I did this in theater all the time. Oh. And I played girls on stage in theater. I played against guys that played girls on stage on theater. We did this on the boards. We said all our lines. Nobody had any problem with it at all. But in D and D, you can't do that. Well, and you know from when I was going to Wednesday nights regularly that sometimes I would screw with the DMs a little because I would get bored. Or because I was mad at the way they were treating the women at the table, but that's a whole other story. 
So I actually broke one of her DMs by flirting with him. <laughs> In character. And he finally just, he put a stop to it right there. He's like, I'm not doing this. Stop. And it was the funniest thing on earth. <laughs> we're, Stephen. We're, we're playing in a medieval, in medieval world, right? What's going on? Society's rules today didn't apply to society from back then in the real world. So why are we constrained to today's societal rules in the game? But what I'm trying to say is why should the moral standards, the, the society standards of today be, be imposed on the role playing or, or in this case the thought process behind playing a fantasy game that really has no bearing on the world and is set in the past. Well, I think in, because in all the people medieval. who are actually witnessing the game being played are still living in the today world and yes. they are still subject to yes. So even the whole purpose of having morals is because we're uncomfortable with it, no. right? So no. even though we say they weren't well, uncomfortable with it then, we're still uncomfortable with it now even if we're pretending about what they were comfortable with then. We still have to deal with it. And if I'm sitting in a world with a guy who's a DM, I go and play in somebody's world, and he makes it really clear mm -hmm. up front, he doesn't want any squick, he doesn't want any gore, he doesn't want any sex, he doesn't want anything like that. I have to abide by that. I won't abide by that, so I'll get up and leave because I know yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm playing yeah. with a child. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and, but but hey, there's no point in trying to change his mind. I about played it. with a 12 year old in a squeaky game, and he enjoyed it. He very much so enjoyed actually having to play his character as drunk, and we thought it was hilarious his interpretation of drunk. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and and again, you know, in in the real world, in in here in in, in town, I I, I support. Space. I, I support the police, I support law enforcement and all that. But in game, in game, I've sort of taken the lead in my group and said, you know, you grab an arm, you grab an arm, you grab a leg, you grab a leg, you go get me a bucket of water, and I'm about to waterboard a dwarf to get information from him. <laughs> would I, would I, would I, in today's world, prove the Canadian or the American government waterboarding terrorists to get information? No. no. But in game... You take up the habit of yelling I'm going to waterboard a dwarf and you stay well, You're making your same thing. You're a lot nicer than I am. <laughs> well, that was just to start with. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, what, what, that's what I wanted. No, no. Was a lot no, I wanted the Kevin, information. I'd kill him after the side. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> What's a little ethnic lensing between friends? This is what I'm saying, though, about, about theater or various other things, is that in theater it's okay for a bunch of 15-year-olds to do Shakespeare, where they're hacking each other to pieces and they're stabbing <laughs> each other with swords, and, and no parent anywhere in the world is screaming because they're, they're doing Shakespeare in high school, no. right? But, but we can't pretend... <laughs> To, to kill people with swords using dice because like, that, oh, that's but, bad. But are these like one of my favorite. Say, yeah, Shakespeare's okay. We can great. kill each other in Shakespeare. Okay. <laughs> but I'm hoping we can avoid it. Shakespeare's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> but here's, here's, my question, then. Here's, my here's my question then. Here's my question then. These same, <laughs> these same people that have a problem <laughs> with their son or daughter playing in a, in a swick game where there might be sexual innuendo or violence, are these the same people that are buying their children Call of Duty? Games are they the same parents that are buying their kids uh, um, yeah. Grand Theft Auto game, where they're they're fully immersed in a combat role, and you see blood, and you see guts, and or violence against women. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody understands. We've all played Grand Theft Auto post the stealing car as part of the game. That's yes. true, and you can tell the difference between reality and a video game. Yeah, reality sucks. It's really easy to tell. It, it's been it's been the contention for years that video game <laughs> just right off. Is there is there anybody here who doesn't agree that that you can tell the difference between reality and fantasy? 
Yeah. Is there anybody here who doesn't think that there would be? Is there anybody here who thinks there's a D and D player anywhere in the world? Well, I'm who sure there's someone. They can't tell I'm sure the there's someone who has no, got had a someone. psychotic break mid D and D running and literally lost. Everybody's their mind. got that friend. But there's, but that's like, oh, no, but he hasn't thought he was really like a god and actually tried to throw lightning bolts at us. Okay. Like that's the difference. I'm talking about real psychotic break. But yeah, and nobody's no. ever had that from a football game, right? No, 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 no they just have concussions and die. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Nobody's ever lost a football game and then gone home and killed themselves. Well, not without uh, killing all their uh, friends uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> Misery it's a loves group effort. You're really taught the team values in those games. <laughs> Everybody high school, you Everybody be careful. If the football team from another high school dropped by, everyone just disappeared. <laughs> because usually a knife was involved. Uh, Living with guys. him... Okay. And him being on D and D like twenty four seven, all of a sudden you'll hear from his room. Damn! God damn it! Damn! Hey, I care. <laughs> I'm invested. I'm a deeply invested in my game. And it makes me game. wonder sometimes, you know. Oh no! I can't think we can tell about. the difference. Reality is depressing. <laughs> Everything else isn't. See, it's really it's a clear. Alarm. You put your your headphones on. You get your mouse and your keyboard, <clears throat> and you hook them all up and stare out the window. Reality, worst game. <laughs> you know, it's so sad. I think everyone here and everyone online would agree with you. Worst game. Ever. Worst game. Ever. Why is that sad? <laughs> Tell me why that's sad. That everyone would agree with that. That life should be more exciting. That life is dull. You have to work all the time. You have to pay money all the time. Nothing. You can't just go into a town and say. Okay, well, let's kill everyone and take all their money and all their gold. There, okay. Okay, now, we can't do that in reality, okay? Anymore. But reality, reality has well, had its swing at the cap, okay? Reality has had, reality has had and it sucks. several million year swing at the cap, okay? And reality is lost, okay? This is better. We've worked ourselves up. We've gotten to the point where we're a technological society. We've invented the computer and all the other things that come with it. And it took us all of, what, about 30 years to kick reality's ass right right in the nuts, right? Okay, so, and now, and now there's this mass of people running around going, oh, no, no, reality's so much better than, than, than the internet. Reality is so much better than computer games. Reality is so much better than films and all that other stuff. Have these people just... seen the internet? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I spent all my time there. <laughs> it took us no I time. I heartily enjoy it. You're it took us no time right at all to beat reality <laughs> with a stick. I'm you really have saying. to get over it. I, know, you I think VR people spend more time on the internet than they do in reality. <laughs> Texting kind of counts as internet people. <laughs> well, it was... Data transfer. <laughs> I'd like to know that that was before I was born. I just want to make <laughs> anybody here and on the internet feel old. Houston's the only one who grew up with only the internet. Yeah, he has never. I've never known not, not the having the internet. internet. So wait, you never do the card catalog? What's a card catalog? <laughs> <laughs> a terrible system. Oh, I'm so glad they got rid of. I was watching this. Yeah, we have to keep reflecting that he has never grown up in a time without the internet. Because we'll all say something and he'll just look at you and you're like, oh yeah, you're younger. Sorry. <laughs> this conversation is happening at the Indigo bookstore in North or in, in West Calgary. We, we, we haven't had anybody show up for this, which doesn't surprise me. It only proves that uh, uh, right now we are living in a world where the internet. They sat us with candles. <laughs> <laughs> kitch, we're really, kitch, we are living everywhere. in a world right now where the internet is enabling us to build these kind of cultures that just don't work in reality. I mean, there's just literally no one in the building here, except for the, the, the seven of us who... No, there's a few back at the coffee shop. There's, there's, no, there's, there's, the there's, there's nobody in the building here who plays, who plays a role-playing game. Mm -hmm. There's lots of people in the building, but there's nobody here except us that plays a role-playing game. And there's no chance of somebody walking in except for us that plays a role playing game. I blasted no into my internet players as well, but um, you got a. I wish I could be there from Iceland. So exactly, I had people from all over the world say that they wish that they could be part of this, mm -hmm. but they're all over the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. You know, 50, 60 people say, "Yeah, I'd love to be there." But that's 50, 60 people scattered oh. across the 50, world. 50, 60 people I, in 12 different time zones. Yeah. With, yeah. With, with, with Google access to searching me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I remember a day and age when the, the internet wasn't 
as Probably. useful really, you as it this? was. <laughs> and I remember, I used, remember this. That was so long ago. I remember when the internet was louder than the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Um, but we, uh, me and a few friends, we were into computers and we would have LAN gaming. Now, LAN gaming meant that we all packed up our desktop computers and boarded a city bus and, and all converged. Recently, I was involved with a oh. online gaming group where we were 150 people worldwide running servers or pay, paying for and managing servers to to have help other people have fun in the game we were playing. Yeah, the mass lab link-ups are awesome. And and it's 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 amazing that I I've, I've grown a connection with people in in Saudi Arabia, in North Carolina, in the Philippines, in Russia who someday I do plan on visiting. It's well, just so a matter of time and money. I'd like that idea, but unless something changes really seriously financially, there are yeah. people I probably never will meet. Yeah, even no, though, exactly. Even though I, I know them. And th th this In fairness, it's fairly cheap to fly to Paraguay. I'm just mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but the, the, the fact that JP will be so happy to hear that. Yeah, You're actually getting people who are saying, you know, like from Iceland, yeah. uh, saying that I'd love to be there but at least you're getting, you're, you're, you've got a, a group of people that are willing to look at what you're doing, and they are worldwide. Okay, well, what happens when I become famous? Okay. I mean, this is something that I think we'll about. We'll need more chairs. You're going to need chairs. at least ten. Uh, <laughs> what, what happens when the thing that happens at the end of Paul, right, where, where Simon Pegg and Nick Frost get to be famous, and now they're walking out onto the stage, and everybody is... Is in the audience. What what ha what happens when that happens to me? You start oh, working okay. nine to five, <laughs> and, and you and you just travel the world doing this, and, like and I just travel the world. And, and, and the well, I'm not going to meet everybody. But, but the thing they don't show you in Paul is that going to and from the convention center, they were totally unharassed because no one else knew who they were. That's, true. That's the beauty of the internet community it, is that the that, people who know you know you, and no one else gives a shit. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Okay, tried to make it it's okay. Serious. I'll let it Shall I, shall I start from the beginning? Okay. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Okay. The, there are three reasons why I think D and D has failed, and the first is that the media has treated it like a joke from the beginning. That even though there were a few attempts to try to make D and D a serious thing in the 1980s, the initial attitude of the the mothers and fathers about the game play among young people was just so negative that it just got pushed out of the general culture. And every time that it would come up in a movie or television after that, it was cast as a bunch of morons playing a game that was completely silly. And in no time was the game ever represented as in any way as it really was. And every time that D&D has been co-opted by any kind of media, it has... It's been horrible. Look, remember the Dungeons and Dragons movie, everybody? I mean, oh my God! I mean, they, they, they put the name on the movie and then they made the they biggest some really piece good of actors in there too. Trash. The worst story. Yeah, they put the <laughs> biggest piece of trash out there, and it's got Dungeons and Dragons as the title. It, it's this is what the media has done. Well, like we were talking about with the break of reality, do any of us? not know the difference between fiction and reality or game and reality. It was like a terrible Tom Hanks movie yeah. you talked about. Exactly. I actually went back and watched it because I'd heard of it. You talked about it. And it really does a disservice to the community as a whole. Yeah, no. And to people who have actual psychological issues. So it's like a double pow pow. Oh, the media <laughs> has just, just absolutely mistreated this. And the, the, second, the second cause of it is that the WOTC who owns the rights to the game have let the media do this. Mm -hmm. the, the, the WOTC doesn't care anything about the game or the value of the game or the presentation of the game in any way whatsoever. If you look at the events that they run for packs, they don't control the, the, the way that the people talk. There's no attempt to make anybody serious. Everybody gets up on stage to pretend to run D&D and it's just a big joke. The audience laughs, the people on stage laugh, everybody's dressed like they just stepped out of a gutter last week and the WOTC lets it go on <laughs> because the WTC just doesn't care about the game. Yeah. So the movie would never have been made if the WOTC hadn't licensed the people who made the movie to use the name. So the WOTC just doesn't care. It doesn't care whether or not anybody has any respect for this game. Well, you know, I... Um, still without, I'm sorry, but let me finish, okay? And the third reason is that it's hard. It's a hard game. Death, yes. Okay, but it would be easier for people to believe that it was a hard, that it was worth getting over the hard, 
if there wasn't so much negativity negativity attached to it. It's hard to kayak. I mean, anybody here have any skill at kayaking a, a rough, raging river in the mountains? It takes a many, many years. It takes 10 or 15 years of hard training to get to the point where you, can, the where you can handle some of the hardest, <laughs> the hardest the rapids in a kayak. But it doesn't seem to stop people from kayaking to that extent. People are killed every year willing to sacrifice their lives in order to kayak the hardest white water in, in, in the world. See, I believe, the, I understand the whole, you know, drowning kayaking thing. I tried to kayak while well, it didn't go well. I was also drunk, so. I love kayaking. You're not supposed to boat drunk. Tisk disk. <laughs> That's that more that of like a suggestion. You have to make mistakes to learn. Yeah, yeah that's right. a prime example. But the, the game I is... Even, I can't even kayak on the Wii. He does a much better job. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> but the, the, the game is hard, yes. But it shouldn't. that shouldn't be a block. That shouldn't be something that stops people from doing it just because it's hard. Many things are hard. The problem is, is that we have a social stigma attached to the game that causes people to not want to try that hard. The social stigma is there saying to people, oh, if you fail, you look like an idiot. And if you tell anybody you play this game, you'll look like an idiot. And if you talk about this game in public, you'll look like an idiot. I think so that just... one's disappearing less and less. But personally, for like my age group, because like a lot of the people who are just genuinely popular and well-known and respected end up playing... Well, it's like I explained to him yeah. yesterday. E3 is our football. E3 is our football. Well, it's, it it's, gets more view. It, it's taken more seriously. E3. Well, it, it's, it's not, it's not E3 even... E3 is a giant game. It, it's it's oh. not even E3. It's like... Um, well, as like, an example. Like, it's like... Uh, take, take a bunch of the YouTube people and the people who are making movies currently. Like, very unabashed old... Well, not old, but like nerds in their late 30s. And they're very, very open about it. And they do streams about it, and they treat it mostly gamers, with, like, respect. Gamers, people who and know their gamers and watch their yeah, shows. Yeah, and it, it and doesn't get, all, like, t like <laughs> TV treats it with derision, but that's because there's nobody writing for, like, TV mainstream TV who's under, who actually plays her as under 50 <laughs> years old. Well, and I, when you go to, like, YouTubes and you see, like, the John... Like the Hank Greens and Will Wheatons and stuff like those people actually are listened to by people under t under twenty five. Like I said yeah. the internet wishes that they were getting ten million views an episode. That's over for them. Yeah. Or, or TV wishes. Mm -hmm. The internet yeah, is getting, getting that. that. Yeah. I would absolutely agree with you, but I think that the reason why young people are no longer feeling this way is because the media is losing the grip entirely on everything in society. The media that yes. I started this with is is completely yeah. losing its grip. Well, Movies don't mean what they meant. TV news and journalist shows and so on, they don't mean what they meant. They're completely losing their grip. And I would say that the WOTC is losing its grip as well. Because there's so much communication going on about the game outside of what the WOTC can control that there's more people out here who are willing to say, no, I'm serious about the game and I'm proud. And they never well, tried to preserve its image to begin with, so why start now? Yeah. <laughs> and too, <laughs> most people think Dungeons and Dragons, they think monsters and killing and all. They have no idea of the book work, the accounting, the Math. The, the math. math. Yeah, the, the sheer yeah, level of math. Well, it's not going like to get easier. You know, we get, exactly get rid of the media, but it's not going to get easier. Tell me exactly how much your backpack can carry. How much does your sword weigh? How much does this weigh? How much does that weigh? Will it all fit in your backpack? How many how many moves does it take to move from here to there? I mean, it's not... Are okay. you saying you don't love this part of the game? <laughs> <laughs> As she smokes him. <laughs> No, by the by, the power of calculators, I think that one's gone a long way because you well, know, and the, the like the algorithms you're and, using, that's the multi-platform calculator. Yeah, like that I don't really have to takes trig a lot on of paper. that work out of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, people say D and D is dying. No, no, no. W O T C is dying. More D popular than it ever has been. D and D, the <laughs> brand is dying, but role-playing games, like the genre of stuff, is getting bigger yes. than it's ever been. Pathfinder is still fundamentally D and D. It has all the same build. It's and, just and it's, and it's absolutely massive. And it's, it's absolutely huge. It has got a little more leeway in a lot of ways. A little yeah, more play the, than strict D and D does. I know when when I tried to start, I told you I tried to start in the late nineties. 
the, I think sometimes part of the problem is that the players themselves are trying to bring people in end up scaring new people away because they make it seem even harder than it is. My introduction was to be handed an entire manual and told I had to read it by next week and create my own character before I came back to the game. I gave them the book back after a couple sure. days because I couldn't get through it. Wild. That's just poor so, yeah. Because you... you and I was you, really excited about doing this, and I ended up giving it back to them. They wouldn't let me even sit and watch a game to get a feel for how it worked. What See, Houston has special that. issues, and we <laughs> like, made up his sheets for him because we knew he'd have trouble. Well, yeah, because I can't do the math and I can't really write. So it's, but yeah, like, it's just proper form to, if someone's new to something, you, like, start their introduction there to make sure they don't screw up. And, like, that it's not, to, that they don't, like, what, go on a deep change. When did Kelly start playing with us? Oh, a couple, God, months, couple ago. months ago. It hasn't been very long. And we didn't we didn't overwhelm him. We did our best to try to bring him in and say, these are the easier ones, these are the harder ones. Pick any one you like, we'll walk you through it. Well, I think a lot of people, I mean, the book, giving you the book and so on, I think a lot of people try to treat it as an academic exercise, okay? Yeah. It's like a university class. You must read these books before you can take the test so that you can pass the test so you can become... I, 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 well, <laughs> neither did I. But it's it's really more of a trade school, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it has to be treated and dealt with like, like a trade. You're, you're, you're not... You're not introduced to the game in, here's everything you need to know. You're introduced to the game in an apprentice style. We teach you first to do this. We teach you, first you're going to, you know, an electrician, right? You're going to strip the walls, you're going to strip stuff out of the walls, and then you're, we're, we're going to get you to the point where we'll allow you to turn screws with a, with, a, with a screwdriver. And then sometime after that, we might let you touch something that's, like, electrical. And so <laughs> on, and step, step by step, you eventually get to the point where... You know, we can trust you with live wires without killing yourself, and that's that's how D and D has to be. That's how DMs have to be made. Is is the whole? You have to do this all at once. Boom, go in, fail miserably. That is a problem. People have to be brought into the whole DMing process as an apprentice. But you know, I've never been able to bring anybody around to say, okay, I will teach you how to be a DM, but you've got to sit at my left do what I do and say what I say until the game is over. Nobody's ever willing to do that. I, I it's either they want to do it completely or they don't want they don't want to do it at all. I, I think we have a new business proposition for you. That might just sell as a course. Um, but I would <laughs> also like there's no, I can't get anybody for, to come out to the Indigo. I don't think it's going to sell thing? as a course. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll just put a camera right next to you so they can Patreon. pretend they're you. There's your Patreon thing. If they donate you $400 a month, they can come sit on your left and be told what to do. <laughs> You were looking for Patreon. Goals. We'll do a Skype. It can go all over. It'll the world. be a Skype. You'll just have a bunch of little iPhones propped up uh, we'll, on we'll, the side we'll, of the we'll deck. Periscope. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and after two months, it gets loaded up into your YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, I would also like so to cool. make the note that I have how many years I've been playing with you guys. Two. Two. Two or three. Two or three, and I have yet to even crack open the uh, book. Well, I've never even opened the page yet. I can play, well, so it Lexi's doesn't matter. Lexi's game because his has been so modified, <laughs> um, and it's so much his own thing. I, I will occasionally pop on the wiki and read up on some stuff, but oh, give me a couple awesome. months and I've forgotten it all. I don't have any books to read for his game, and it finally broke me from wanting to constantly having something to refer to. Yeah. I mean, we've got a backpack that we keep just gaming stuff in and a briefcase. It's two bags. And he used to haul this everywhere when we go to like a 5e game. We have four books for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's pretty much it for our time. We are, it is eight o'clock and Ooh. we're done. So we have to close this down and let them take the chairs away. And I guess you can pretty much publish all of this after all. Listen, if anybody wants to come find me on my Patreon, that would be appreciated. If anybody wants to kick into my Jumpstarter, this will probably be posted before my Jumpstarter is over. Uh, come and find me at Tau of d and at Blogspot. Uh, Tau-D&D.blogspot.com. It's hard to do this without, without a computer. I just think in terms of writing. It's out of his element. It's all that reality. <laughs> it's, it's, it's film. It's film. I'm Where's a writer. What am I doing on film? <laughs> or find you on Worst Twitter. Worst game ever. <laughs> search, search the Google. So, uh, thank you all, and uh, we'll just call this here.